You've been gone a long time. Where did you go? Hey, welcome back to the Fortress of Solitude, and today I'm talking about Lois Lane. Why? Well, Lois Lane is a very important part of the Superman mythos, even though I haven't discussed her before. I usually think that goes without saying. Lois Lane appears in Action Comics 1. She's been around since day one. She's just an old, as old as a character as Superman. If Superman is 77, Lois Lane is 77. They're the Adam and Eve of the superhero universe. Unfortunately, DC has a Lois Lane problem. Maybe not just a woman problem, but a Lois Lane problem. You see, Lois has, it's kind of ridiculous what's happened. See, Lois Lane is really the connection that Superman gets to make that humanizes him completely. Not humanizes him, but humanizes him completely. He's still able to do a whole bunch of the human things and interacting with Perry White and Jimmy Olsen and whatever friends he may make. But Lois Lane is the part of him that's going to complete it. That's going to be his girlfriend. That's going to be his fiance. That's going to be his wife. And eventually she's going to be the mother of his children. Okay? That is a big part of the human experience. And when you take her out of that, he no longer has that. You can't put him with Wonder Woman and have the experience be the same because Wonder Woman, quite frankly, isn't human. You know? You're also saying that the only way that he can actually be content is to be with someone of power that's comparable to his own. So what does that say about human beings? Guess we just don't rate. Wonder Woman can't have Steve Trevor, and Superman, uh, he doesn't need Lois Lane because if you've read that stupid pure essay on men of steel, women of Kleenex, you know, he, he needs a woman for only one particular purpose, and that's that she won't break. It's utterly ridiculous. Most recently, Lois Lane has been a villain to Superman. In the comics, she was possessed by Brainiac, dubbed Lois Laniac by some, and she was threatening to reveal his secret identity. Now, I guess that for some writers, they decided, hey, why don't we go all the way with that and just have Lois reveal his secret identity? Okay, Lois Lane and Clark Kent and Superman didn't really share a lot of connection with this whole New 52 reboot. Now that you've done this, they have almost no connection because why in the world would he trust her? Why in the world would he want to be affiliated with someone who has just outed him to the entire world when he needs the Clark Kent persona in order to be in connection with the world? He doesn't want to be Superman 24-7. He needs that downtime so he can just be a regular guy. Go get some coffee. You know, sit and have a bagel with someone. Go to a game and people aren't looking at him with awe or with the sense of, hey, shouldn't you be on the other side of the world? Isn't there a problem somewhere you should be? And he doesn't have to explain, well, there are still people on the other side of the world who can handle that. You know, I'm just going to take in the baseball game. So she totally outs him. In doing so, she makes Clark the mask. You know, for those of you guys who are like, oh, no, Superman's the mask and Clark is the real guy. No, 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 no. Because now he's Superman full time. Clark Kent doesn't matter. Clark Kent doesn't have a job. He doesn't have money. He barely has a place to stay. He can't really be around other people because, of course, he's going to get attacked. And when he does, there's going to be the collateral damage. And again, all because of Lois Lane. You know, all because of her. It doesn't make any sense. It seems like they want to distance her as much as possible from Superman, but they haven't done anything to build up her character. One of the arguments is that they have a problem that, you know, men always have this problem with strong women. Well, normally I disagree with that, but they sure as heck seem to have a problem with the strong woman who is Lois Lane. Half of that is the portrayal of Lois Lane by some writers. Lois Lane can come across as a bit harsh in her pursuit of the truth, and that should never be the case. Lois Lane has a very big heart. Even though she's in the pursuit of making certain that the people are informed, she's not going to expose someone simply because, hey, that's the truth of the whole matter. Journalists do have ethics to follow, and one journalistic ethic is, is this information that I'm going to put out, one, crucial to the public, and two, in releasing this information, will it put the public at risk? Revealing Superman's identity fits into both of those aspects. It's not crucial that the public knows who Superman is. He's not a fugitive. He's not evil. He hasn't been possessed or anything of that nature in this timeline where people need to know this. 
So that's one. And two, once you have revealed that Superman is Clark Kent, there's nowhere he can go where trouble won't follow him. And in doing such a thing, all you've done is made it so that you don't have that journalistic ethic that this premier journalist should actually have. It really undercuts the whole thing, and it really makes her seem harsh. And that's not something that Lois Lane should ever come across at. She's a very loving character. And we get to see that mostly in the fact that she's able to garner the love of the world's most powerful man because of that heart. Not just the fact that she's this fearless individual. Not just the fact, okay, that she can be assertive without being aggressive. That's the key to the character. I don't know many people who really like aggressive people. That person who comes over, hey, and starts shaking your hand and, you know, pulling you into something. Most people don't dig that. But we do like the person who's assertive, the person who will stand up for themselves, the person who will stand up for you if that's what the nature of the situation calls for. And they've taken that away from her and making her, to be honest, a bigger villain for him than Lex Luthor's been since this whole New 52 thing started. And you have to wonder why. What is the big draw of making Lois Lane a villain? And then what is the fear of this particular character as well? A lot of guys are going to get into Lois Lane for different reasons. The most basic reason, hey, she's a beautiful woman, and guys mostly, for the most part, like beautiful women. Okay, She's a part of the mythos, and guys just accept her. But there's also a contingent of guys out there who would love to, hey, kill off Lois Lane, because let's see how Superman reacts to it. And she's not the character that you kill off for character development. I've never believed in that anyway. You don't kill off Lois Lane to give Superman an edge. You don't kill off Lois Lane to see how he's going to handle it because she's an integral part of the mythos. You don't do these particular things because it undercuts Superman as a character. Now you have to introduce someone else, and when you introduce someone else, Lois Lane sucks all the air out of the room because she's been the premier woman for, him for 75 years. And the other thing is, if you're going to introduce something new, well, what was the problem with Lois Lane to begin with? There's no problem with her character. And you can screw up anybody's character as a writer, even Superman's, if done incorrectly. It's a head scratcher, and really a head shaker when you think about it. I mean, she's a wonderful character when done correctly. A lot of writers seem to think that, you know, making her aggressive makes her strong. And no, it's the compassionate part of her. It's the assertive part of her that makes her strong. It's the fact that she's willing to do things that the average person may not be willing to do. Her lack of fear and pursuit of these particular things that makes her such a valuable character to Superman. And then you have to think about it. Who is this guy going to talk to if there's no Lois Lane? Batman? Wonder Woman? The Martian Manhunter? You know, she's the only human being who he's let fully into his life outside of his parents and would be able to understand the ins and outs of it. The other thing that you also subtract from the story when you subtract Lois Lane from it, and it'll sound a little bit sentimental, but you take love out of the equation. And I would hope to think that DC is not saying that there's something wrong with two characters being in love with each other, which they've been for a very long period of time now. Most of the readership of comic books are older guys like myself old farts like myself. They're not six years old, they're not 16 even. They're guys in their th late 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s who are reading these things. So you would think that we should be able to handle a concept as heavy as love without saying, oh no, you got him married, you gave him a kid? Ah, oh, no, you jumped the shark. That's life. And as much as people want to see this realistic, you know, this realistic portrayal of life in comics, what is the big resistance to that? These are two characters who loved each other, were in love with each other, and had a very healthy relationship. No bickering, no bile, uh, no one-upsmanship that wasn't friendly, if such a thing is actually possible. Okay, They could be rivals and at the same time respect each other. It was such a great example across the board in terms of comics. And it's such a thing that's not seen in comics, to be quite honest. I mean, heck, they even mess with Reed Richards and Sue Richards all of the time in order to stoke up a little thing. But Lois and Superman were pretty much safe from all of that. They decided to undo that and didn't replace it with anything. Now you've got Superman running around with a buzz haircut and a t-shirt, and he's definitely not talking to Lois Lane. And if he does, the big elephant in the room is, why are you talking to this woman if she would betray your biggest secret? It's unfortunate and altogether unnecessary. Oh, if there's one thing for certain, if these guys can't get Superman correctly, if they can't, after a year's time of meeting and planning, 
come up with suitable Superman stories that don't involve depowering him and having him ride a motorcycle, there's no way on God's green earth they're going to get Lois Lane correct. Sad but true. Anyway, Calvin L is signing out from the Fortress of Solitude. Hope to see you back again here real soon.